Hey guys, I'm at Raleigh Electric's North American headquarters. I'm getting you to check out two versions of the Retro Glide. We have the step through 16 inch frame over there and the cantilever high step 18 inch right here. Retro Glide, you know, to me, it's such a cool name, like retro kind of classic cantilever cruiser and then glide. I guess it's just fun. The IE means electric. So these are electric assist class one bikes. And you can see like these days they're kind of stamping that on the frame, like how fast they go, uh, what class they are. I'm here in California and, and this is where a lot of the e-bike legislation is happening. Class one is the lowest, most like highly accessible uh, electric bike you can get into. Top speed, 20 miles per hour. But one of the neat things about these Raleigh electric bikes is that their drive system, it's by TransX and it's, it's something called the CAN bus system, which means that dealers can get into the the software they actually have this little dongle that attaches right here with this cable and they can run it to their computer and they can change things like the top speed so you can lower it from 20 miles per hour if you're just concerned about getting out of control and you want to extend your range or you know if, if someone's a little less balanced those are really cool features they were upgrading the software on these earlier for me because there's actually like this walk mode and this range readout i'll get to all of that in a little bit these bikes, either one, are $19.99. So we're at that $2,000 price point. You get a two-year warranty, which is pretty solid. Again, Raleigh has this great reputation. They've been around for a long time. And these e-bikes are, are sort of a new thing for them over the past couple, maybe several years. I've gotten to review several, but this is the, it's the first time I've seen the Retro Glide. Uh, and while I would call that, you know, they call it a step through, I would call this a mid-step because it doesn't have, it's not super low. You still have to raise your leg a little bit. Raleigh has another model called the Sprite IE, and that one's pretty cool. It's a little bit, it's like $100 cheaper. It's not quite as classic looking. It weighs a little bit less. These are like 57 and a half pounds, so maybe that one's a few pounds less. If you like this frame style, go for it. Like, I definitely like the bigger tires. They're a little bit fatter than on the Sprite. These are 26 by 2.25. I'd call them cruiser tires. They're from Kenda. They got that nice kind of a white walled look to them or maybe a tan rubber going on. A lot of the parts on this bike are capable, but, but they're stripped down a little bit to be more affordable. So I'm gonna talk about the things that aren't stripped down that are really nice to have, starting with the fenders. So these are steel fenders, paint matched, that's really nice. And then we've also got a paint matched chain cover and that's aluminum, which is cool because sometimes you scrape that with your feet or whatever and it won't rust as easily. You can see that it has a mid-drive motor and a rear-mounted battery. Now, whenever you put weight way up high in the rear like that, it sort of changes the, the handling of any electric bike and you get a little bit of frame flex, especially on the step through. The high step version, it's gonna be a little bit stiffer because you've got that top tube coming all the way and then that reinforcement arc. Again, a little bit rear heavy, but mid-drive helps. Some of the other cruisers out there have a rear hub motor and a rear-mounted battery and that just adds up. That battery is like 7.4 pounds. 48 volt, 8.8 .8 amp hour lithium ion battery pack. I'd say that's it's kind of average in terms of 48 volts, but a lot of e-bikes used to be 36 volts. So 48 is more efficient in sending electricity. You're gonna get a little bit more zip. And I appreciate that. Like it's kind of nice when you wanna go fast or climb that you can. And if you want, you can even change these from class one to class two by paying 50 bucks and having your dealer install this throttle. So. I guess it's kind of a button throttle. They would mount it maybe just in front of your triggers right here. I guess you could put it on that side too. It's really up to you. You'd have to hold the power button for a couple seconds, a green light comes on, and then you could go six miles per hour with that top button or full speed with the bottom, but you have to hold it. And you can imagine, you know, reaching over, you're steering and you're holding that button the whole time. It's not quite as comfortable as a twist throttle, but it's nice that you have this option at all. So, you know, for me, that's kind of a mixed blessing. By the way, this is the charger, two amps, 1.7 pounds. I call this average, but it does have a nice metal kind of a connector piece at the end so you don't get cracks and you know breaking happening. You can charge this battery pack on or off the bike, which is great. A lot of times I'll just leave it on so I don't lose it or drop it, but they have a really cool integrated handle with magnets. So see, it stays closed. It's not gonna rattle around a whole lot. And these keys do not have to be left in the battery pack while riding, so that's cool too. Okay, so the battery pack slides right on. 
Other times when you're lifting this, you're gonna put it on a rack on your car or whatever, it's nice to save those 7.4 pounds. And you can, you can save even more weight by taking off the front wheel and the back wheel. They both have quick release, standard nine millimeter skewer. I think that's 10 millimeters in the back. Great kickstands. I like that they, they went the extra mile and made them silver, silver spokes, silver seat post. 27.2 millimeters, so if you wanted to, you could swap this out with a seat post suspension. But the saddle is another area that's, I think, pretty nice. It's got these big springs and it's a little bit oversized, so it's fairly comfortable. Nice ergonomic grips with the Raleigh insignia right here. They aren't locking, so if you really bear down, they could twist, but you know, they get the job done. And then these plastic pedals. Sometimes I complain about plastic, it's a little bit flexier than aluminum, but Sometimes I've slipped off my aluminum pedals and cut my shins all up. So at least the plastic nubs might, might be a little bit more forgiving. And they're pretty grippy. You got the fenders. If it's wet outside, I feel like these pedals would do a decent job. Um, and they, you know, they're black. They kind of blend in nicely. They're better than the cages in my opinion. So anyway, coming off of that, if we get back up here a little bit, you'll see how the, the wires are all integrated. Here's that extra connector point, so you could easily plug in that throttle if you wanted to, and you could even install that yourself. Very cool. Quill stem could kind of raise up and down a little bit, and it's a little bit more firm. The Sprite, i.e. the slightly cheaper model, that one has an adjustable angle stem that can get loose over time if you're riding. If you, Again, if you're a bigger person and you're just steering the heavier wheel and stuff, so I feel like that's a decent choice. And then the drivetrains are the same on them. So we have seven speeds. This is the thumb, thumb shifter from Shimano. Really big buttons, easy to switch if you're wearing gloves, easy to figure out, but not quite as, I guess, compact and fast as like the little tiny triggers that you see on some of the mountain bikes and stuff. We got Shimano Altus. So this is not the bottom of the line. This is like a couple steps up in the Shimano line. And I think it's 12 to 32 teeth. So we have that extra big chain ring on top, 32 teeth to help you climb, 42 teeth on that, that front chain ring. And it's got uh, an aluminum guide. So see, there's a plate on the inside and the outside of the sprocket. So that if you're going over bumps, especially in throttle mode, sometimes the chain can bounce off on our electric bikes. So that's a really great thing in my opinion. And slightly shorter crank arms, 170 millimeter versus 175 on the other ones. I realize it's a lot of technical information here and I list all of that back at the website, but sometimes it's neat to compare the bikes and like really think about like, oh, okay, well this, this pedal might not go as low and scrape the ground as easily, or maybe I'm gonna be pedaling a, with a little bit more, uh, like a higher cadence on this bike, things like that, that you can think about when you're really scrutinizing the details. Coming back to paint matched, you know, this is a beautiful metallic dark red and come along like a pink and we've got a royal blue over there. And even the rims, look at this, they're, they're matched as well. That's something you don't see a lot. Extra thick spokes here, 13 gauge versus 14. It's gonna give you a little bit more strength. And I wish I knew how much weight this rack could, could carry. It doesn't say, a lot of times they're 40 to 55 pounds, but you gotta subtract like the 7.4 pounds there. So, you know, maybe it's 35, 30, 35 pounds. It's still a lot. You've got this nice pannier arm right here and sort of mounts the panniers a little bit lower. A lot of them have clips that kind of just click right there. And then a little bit of a blocker right here. There's not like a huge blocker going on and there's no bungee clasp at the bottom. But again, this isn't exactly a commuter bike. It's more of a neighborhood cruiser. And a lot of times I'll just put like a trunk bag on top, right, like that. There are also no lights built right in, but a lot of these bikes, the Raleigh bikes have a wire right there you can see. So it's pre-wired for lights. So this is the kind of bike that you could accessorize a little bit in the shop. You know, you start with a more affordable platform and then you can pick and choose like, oh, I'm never gonna ride at night. I don't care about lights, fine. Or if you are someone who feels like, yeah, we're gonna go to the concert and hang out at the park. I really wanna, you know, be safe. And I don't wanna worry about someone stealing the lights as easily. I don't wanna worry about charging them separately or leaving them on accidentally. It's great that you can tap into that. It's, it's a really good platform. And I love that they've even introduced bottle cage bosses on the step through right there and on the high step. You know, you could use that for liquid or you could put a little folding lock, a mini pump, something like that. Nice to see. Now, I started this conversation with like, hey, some of these parts are a little cheaper. So I'm gonna hit some of those. The brakes here, they're a little bit more basic. Tektro linear pull, they're mechanical. So these don't have adjustable reach levers. They're just this big thing that you kind of have to pull. You have to use a little bit more arm strength to stop. They do a good job. These kind of brakes have been 
for decades. They've been fine, but they can, you know, you get wet and dirt on the rims and it's just a little bit messier versus disc brakes. Uh, it's something I think about a little bit more. Also, if you're taking the wheel off, you gotta kinda like squeeze these and take the brake off. A little bit of an extra step. I mentioned that the grips aren't locking, that the pedals are plastic. And really, it's the drive system here. I like the Transx mid-drive, but it's not quite as sophisticated as like Bosch, for example. Bosch measures your wheel speed, pedal cadence, your pedal torque, whereas this just metal measures pedal cadence. Okay, so in some ways that's good. You don't have to push, you don't have to be as engaged. You can just pedal along and choose your power up on the display and it just goes. It's kind of on or off, whatever power you select. But it's not smart enough to realize like, oh, they're shifting gears, we should ease off which means that there's a little more tension put on the chain and the rear cogs and that derailleur. And over time, that can wear that drivetrain out a little bit, especially because, you know, again, this isn't the top of the line uh, derailleur. I guess it's fine if you're just kind of staying in the same gear, especially if you have the throttle and stuff. It's, it's just an area that I'd be a little bit more sensitive to. Just like with a regular pedal power bike, you don't want to like be standing up pedaling real hard and shifting. And this is kind of the equivalent of really powerful pedaling. I'll show you what that's like a little bit later. So that's, again, one of the areas that's like, eh. I like that they, they put a little plastic uh, sticker here though, slap guard so that your, your frame doesn't get all nicked up. I'm gonna get on the high step first, 18 inch. I think you have to come back here first and press the power button and see it light up. It's nice that there's an independent LED display there so that if it's off the bike, you can see how full it is. I recommend storing these in like a cool dry location. Sometimes I store them at like half full if it's gonna be several months, just that way it's not like straining the battery empty or full. And then I, a lot of times I'll charge it up and kind of check on it every once in a while just to make sure like, is it slowly wearing out? Extreme heat can sort of naturally break the cells down. So yeah, no, that's something I think about. I mentioned the warranty before, but I think these have like Panasonic cells in them, the battery, which is one of the higher end uh, manufacturers. It's great to see. Okay, so I pressed the power button back there. Here's got a second power button here, but it just came on. So we're ready to go. We've got a green LED at the top, and that goes from green to yellow to red, and that's basically full, medium, or empty. That's one of the areas that's a little bit like, it leaves something to be desired, because what does yellow really mean? How about red? Like if it just turned red, do I need to head home right away? I don't know. It's basically, is it 30% increments? I, I don't know. A lot of times it's just the voltage. It's kind of giving you a general voltage measurement. They recommend on the site that like, okay, you know, 15 or 20 miles to 35 miles. But there is a cool range feature built right into this thing. If you press the power button, it, it estimates the range. So right now it says, okay, in the highest level of pedal assist, that's the most powerful. If I hit the power button, it says 14 miles. Okay, but if I, if I arrow down to the first level of pedal assist, 47 miles. So this range conflicts with what they say on their website. It might take some time to figure out for yourself. And again, based on your weight and the terrain and everything, it can be very different. The zero there changes to speed once you start riding. And then as mentioned before, we have zero, one, two, three, four, pedal assist level. And then there's even a walk mode. So you can hold plus for a few seconds. This green light comes on. That's the same green light if you have the throttle. And then we press minus for a second here. And the mid drive should click on. Except I'm not in pedal assist yet. Okay, there we go. Now I'm in pedal assist. You have to be in one through four. Let's try it again. There it is. See, so here the bike's not going very fast, but it's moving itself. I don't have to strain myself like pushing it up a ramp or a hill with my friend, especially if I had a bunch of groceries on it or something. Oh, and I like where the kickstand is mounted. See how it's completely out of the way of those crank arms? It's not gonna get, it's not gonna get bumped or something like that. And yet it still supports the bike really well. Okay, mounting up, I'm gonna go up to level three and I'm gonna pedal along and give you some views. They've designed it to start out pretty smoothly. Like from zero, it's sort of like, and then you get to a certain speed. I don't know if it's like 10 miles per hour and then it starts to get zippier. Pretty cool. 
And I'm a big fan of the upright body position. Very comfortable. It's the kind of bike that you can ride around, talk with your friends, spot traffic and stuff. And it's fairly stable. You know, there's a little bit more weight at the front, but it rides kind of fine on its own. Now I'm gonna go all the way up to power four and I'm gonna shift gears. Oh boy, a little bit of a loud noise happening there. My drivetrain is still intact, but yeah, that's, that's what I mean. I wasn't standing up. I wasn't like overdoing it with power, but that motor in its highest level of assist is really putting some, some energy into the chain and the sprockets. So this is really some feedback on how to ride, how to work with this bike to get it to perform. You know, they, they have to make some decisions in terms of price when they do these electric bikes and they've tried to hit the lower price point, but that means that you have a little bit more to think about when you're riding. Hey guys, I'm in the highest level of pedal assist. I swapped you over to the step through frame just so we could, you know, see some of that frame flex I was talking about. You can listen while I'm shifting gears and hopefully get an up close view of how responsive that motor is. So let's go. Brakes felt pretty solid. And you might have noticed that the motor stopped turning and just completely quieted down there after a bit. That's because I hit the top speed of 20 miles per hour. actually do a lot of frame flex stuff but this is kind of sort of what I was talking about it's not too bad it's pretty common with step throughs but wanted to give you the feedback another area I neglected to mention while we were looking at the display is that there's an integrated mini USB charging port right here okay so mini it's not the micro it's not the super tiny tiny one it's like relatively tiny and it's five volts so you could be charging like a phone or maybe an mp3 player or a light or anything like that it's kind of cool that that's that's there you can tap into that battery pack the other thing i wanted to call out is the brake levers they're a little bit more generic and they don't have a motor inhibitor they used to when the raleigh bikes and izip bikes had uh, kind of a twist throttle built in but with the cadence sensor there are times where i can be pedaling and the, the motor's active when i'm braking at the same time and it's the, the two different systems and to me, that's kind of a question mark. It'd be nice if they still had the, the motor inhibitors. I guess people are smart enough to stop pedaling if they want to stop, but you know, it, there's a little bit of overflow. Like the pedal assist isn't immediately responsive. I'll, I'll try to show that again. So I'm pedaling and now I'm going to stop. It's pretty good. Maybe I'm overreacting. I was just surprised. Sometimes people do unexpected things when they're trying to stop. And you know, here I am braking, but the motor's still going because I'm pedaling. So I don't know. I think they've done a good enough job. It's a great bike in terms of style, whoa, and balance. I like it in terms of cruisers. There are some great options these days and having a couple different colors and sizes is all right by me. For the full write up on this, this is the Raleigh Retro Glide IE including all the specs and comments and stuff. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun out there, ride safe.